Hi guys, welcome to Dead by Tomorrow Interviews. My name is Daniel Winter and my co-host is Andrew Monroe. As we explore different topics that are worth thinking about today, we want to bring in guests to share their own unique perspective. We hope you enjoy hearing from our guests as much as we enjoy talking to them. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Dead by Tomorrow. We are, as always, thrilled to have you. It is a beautiful spring uh, day over here in Amarillo. I don't know about Dallas, but it has been some nice weather this weekend. So I am honestly glad we are not doing the couch challenge anymore because I need to be outside some. So we are finishing up our sequel challenge. Uh, this is the combo episode where we tell you about the challenge number two, which was learning how to code SQL for Daniel and I and Python for Brett. And then after we do a little bit of review, see how it went, uh, I'll probably make fun of Brett and Daniel a little bit for their consistency. Uh, we will jump into what we're going to be doing for challenge number three, which is a uh, spoiler alert, a outdoors jumping kind of challenge. I think we're going to call it the vertical challenge. So Brett, Daniel, how y'all doing? Good. I'm, I'm bad guys. I'm less nervous this time. I was a little <laughs> nervous the first go around. I don't know why, but I was. Yeah, maybe it's a difference in scenery. I don't know. Like, do you, are you nervous in your office? Because we recorded last time. Yeah, we did record in my office. I'm often nervous there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Good point. That's, that makes for a rough week, I bet. <laughs> rough week. Just nervous all week. <laughs> <laughs> just just five days it's there's just those other two straight. where you're not nervous <laughs> the weekend i just get out of the office i feel great I'm like hey man <laughs> do that more often no doing good we also so, have awesome weather here in dallas it's been nice yeah i got to get out and do a little track workout do a little um yard work so it's been a very full weekend for me andrew when was the last time you sprinted 400 meters a lap uh, it has been a hot minute. Uh, I would say maybe years. It might be in the uh, the pre knee injury time frame. <laughs> Same, more than likely. Daniel sprinted four hundreds today. Yeah, I saw it like ten of them. Right, Daniel? I only sprinted five of them. I jogged five of them. It's <laughs> <laughs> still rough. Uh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I mean, I love the warm weather. It was pretty brutal at the time. I probably would have considered laying down on the track and passing out or throwing up, except right as I finished, there was a maybe middle school track meet that was about to start happening. So I was like, okay, I, I can't embarrass myself like that. I need to. There's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm good. I've recovered. You're wild, man. Brett and I are going to have ice cream sandwiches after this to commemorate the the running and com commemorate. Yeah. I think Brett did some jogging today. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've jogged hey, for a bit. That's a, that's, that is just as hard with a bum knee, I think. Uh, I bet Brett is hurting just, well, maybe not just as much because sprints are just a whole demon of their own. But no, no. you know what? Props to you too, Brett. I didn't either of them. I went on a walk today uh, briefly and had a lot of coffee and... Did some cleaning, so uh, not been a very physical day for me, which is kind of atypical for a Sunday. Sounds like a nice restful Sunday, though. <laughs> yeah, I need a Sunday like that it. soon. It, I, I recommend it. Okay. Um, how'd y'all feel about the challenge? How'd y'all enjoy the end of our coding boot camp? Uh, it's been 15 days-ish, I guess, like, closer to, like, 16 or 17 since we last talked. Um, how to finish out for you guys? Because I assume that, you know, the chart's only one uh, perspective of the equation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I So I was able to finish the two sort of free programs that I did. So it was SQL Zoo, and then I think it was called SQL Basics or something along that line. So I, I feel like I have a pretty decent handle on the most basic aspects of SQL joining tables and... Uh, using select, using where statements, some of those types of things. Um, I have to say that I did not secure access with my IT group to be able to actually play around the SQL at my work. I've kind of, kind of have gotten a, a little bit busier again on the work side of things. Um, so once I finished my 
courses, I, I kind of dropped off the cliff a little bit. So I, I would say that I was happy to finish the core work, coursework. I feel like I have a pretty decent handle on SQL. I have a better understanding of some of the things that maybe I should ask for with our reporting team if I'm requesting reports, uh, but have not had an opportunity to put things into practice, which is why I asked you to, to send me over the stuff so I can play in the, your database, which I think you were successful in our end of month challenge, right? Yes. But before we get into that, because oh. I might talk too long about that, I want to hear about Brett's stuff. Uh, I want to hear about Python for Brett because I, I'm going to toot my own horn a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, going into the challenge, I was real excited about it. I was excited to be on the podcast. I like the idea of having a daily, like I'm going to learn a little bit each day. And I started off by actually looking at the data. First couple days, I started off consistent. And then it was just one of those months where if we did not, if we weren't doing this together and we weren't doing a challenge together, I would have not even thought about coding, learning a new skill, just craziness with work. Um, but the last week I, I came back, I was consistent the last somewhat week. I had to pivot a little bit instead of going, you know, following YouTube tutorials and the book I was reading. I was like, I just need to try a project and learn that way. So I, I'm still working on it. It, 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 my goal was to make a program that would automate something at work. I haven't quite automated it, but I have Frankenstein some different, different, uh, codes and models together to convert some files that I can use at work. So I, I can convert, um, like images I download into JPEGs and other documents that I have to, you know, when I, when I download them from our, um, from our system for work, and then I have to email them out or send them out to my install teams, I have to just convert them to PDFs or whatever. Um, I'm able to convert those files with a program, but I haven't automated it. I have to like click each file, click track. So I'm excited. I have a little project. I've learned some Python. Um, I wasn't consistent every day, um, but I've got some steps and some, some fun. Okay. Hey, so since I did not, I didn't learn Python and that's, that's cool that you're able to do your thing, uh, or at least got some, as you said, Frankenstein, uh, slapped together in this. What oh, yeah. exactly did you Frankenstein together and how much code was actually involved in making your, I guess, in project, like how much actual hours, how much, how much time, give me the whole breakdown of what you did and how it came about and how long it took and what it does for you. Okay, okay. If you can. Oh, wow. Okay. If I had to break down my, my little baby program right now, I probably put <laughs> three hours into it, three, three and a half, just on this program. Um, and it can do two things. It, um, converts, it was the, the, the high efficiency image file that Apple products use the dot H E I C it converts those into JPEGs yes. and then it converts, uh, Basically, it, it, it converts a document I download on mine to PDFs, but I have to select each file. So what I did was a lot of Googling and a lot of um, Python is cool where the community, there's a ton of libraries of just modules and codes that you can import into your code. So right now, my program is is very little. Of, like, I, I did not start from scratch or anything, but I imported probably about three or four different modules um, and kind of pieced them together and then kind of directed them to um, my own file folder of documents I'm using to test this. Um, but I'm pretty proud of it. Um, my next step is to figure out how to um, have the program actually look in the file, identify what needs to be converted and do it on its, on its own, rather than me clicking it or rather than me typing out the file name um, to actually automate it. Um, but very little like Brett's own code. It's just pieced together other, it was trial and error, trial and error. <laughs> well, I think that's, I think that's what a lot of, especially on the beginning front of coding gets you is the ability to go borrow other people's stuff and make something of it. Like you don't have to spend hours and hours writing out your own code. It's, Hey, I actually understand what I'm looking for and I can read what I'm looking for. For sure. For sure. I've got to brag a little bit on the end results of the SQL challenge for me because 
I finished up my Udemy class and we'll get into the, the concepts that we like the routes we took and why I thought mine might be more of an incentive, at least in my opinion, but finished up the Udemy course, uh, three days before, um, the drop dead day. And I was like, okay, three days is plenty. I haven't really dug deeply into getting this file cracked open, but, uh, like I've got a pretty decent handle on SQL now. I can, I can play with SQL. And so I started looking around and tried to import it into Postgres SQL, which is what I was using and it wouldn't work. And which is like the, the user interface that I was using to access databases. Um, I was like, okay, well, this is unfortunate. Googled, Hey, why can't you do this? And I was like, oh, it doesn't take .sql files. You basically have to do a CSV file, you know, like your typical Excel file. Hmm. And then you have to import it. And then you've got to have the database database preset to be ready for that data. So I have to build out all the tables and the columns, uh, for that data to come in. I was like, that is just impossible. I don't, there's just no way there's thousands and thousands of, uh, tables and I didn't even know how many columns, like it's massive, massive, massive. <laughs> file. It's a text file. And as a text file, it's like 30 gigs. Like, it, it's huge. There was no way I was going to manually recreate this database to import. I was like, well, that's, that's the end of that. So I was like, okay, there's gotta be a better way. So I'm digging around. We're now day two of this. Uh, and basically, uh, to fast forward, what could be a long story, I spent a lot of time basically deciding to give up on it. Like I couldn't figure it out. And everything I found online was like, oh yeah, here's this, this. And I was just like, I can't do it. Um, it's either going to cost me like two or $3,000 or it's going to cost me weeks of my life, you know, messing with this. So I, instead the last day I was like, you know what? I'm just going to hop on Destiny. I'm going to play some video games. So I hop on, I'm playing I'm like, you know what? I just can't give up on this. I've got to check one more thing. So I reached out to my cousin. I was like, Hey, uh, <laughs> Derek, how do I, pirate my sequel and uh Derek he was like uh <laughs> yeah he was like uh we can look at it that that's kind of sketchy to do though you might get something you know developer stuff is not the best to pirate because when I was looking at my sequel uh it was very expensive it was like three thousand dollars a year I was just not going to do that ends up they just hide the free stuff in the back of the website uh, and there was <laughs> it wasn't actually that bad but like there was a free my sequel download and I had the workbench that goes with it and then I had to upload it and then we'll fast forward again. There's lots and lots of headaches. I gave up again. And then like late that night, I played too much destiny. I was like, what is this air that it keeps giving me when I import this file? And so <laughs> this is really dumb, but I just wasn't creating like a separate new schema is what it's called to bring that file in. Did that, told it to go. And then it like, just looked at me like it acted like it was importing, but it said like starting import. And nothing else. It didn't give me like a status bar or anything. It just said starting in port for like an hour. I was like, well, it hasn't aired out like it was doing earlier. So maybe it's doing something. <laughs> so I plugged, yeah, plugged the laptop in, came back the next morning and I had imported, everything worked. And it was, I was ecstatic, honestly. Like I was on cloud night. I think that was like Wednesday or Thursday because I'd given up like for three days. I was like, well, this episode is going to be disappointing because I'm just going to have to say that like, we can't get into the file because I don't have the resources or whatever, but uh, we got in and I'm super proud and excited that we're able to get in and be able to touch it. So I would call this uh, a success for me. I'm excited. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I was already somewhat excited to get in and kind of play around in the database. And now I'm really excited about it. I really need to get in there and play around with uh, things and, you know, maybe screw it up so that all your hard work. <laughs> Don't worry. I already thought about that. And that's why you're going to have to download your own MySQL and then you'll load your file in because then we'll have separate ones. And then if something breaks, I don't have to redo it on my end. <laughs> nice. That's a good call. So it'll all be good. Sweet. I also don't know, like, besides hosting my uh, laptop as a server, which would not be a great idea, I don't think uh, that would be difficult without getting a static IP. Anyways, we won't get into that as technical. There's not a good way for me to do it without, again, spending a bunch of money. <laughs> Andrew, you have to tell us, though, you, you unlocked this hidden, all this hidden data. Tell me there's like a treasure map. What's part two of your adventure? <sighs> See, that's what's also disappointing about this. <laughs> this is not the Goonies. There is not like <laughs> buried treasure in there. Uh, basically, and I, I maybe I didn't explain this 
uh, in the first episode or when we were talking about it, but we swapped our CRMs, like the billing system, customer relationship management system we used. We swapped it from this thing called Power Code, and we went over to Sonar. And ninety uh, percent of it came over fine. Uh, now I understand where some of the problems came from because basically, if the things didn't map right to what they were doing in their CRM when I brought it over, like they were having to go find that table or that column that wasn't mapping right and making sure that data was doing its thing. And I just can't even imagine that that would be a treasure hunt, but like with the lamest of treasure on the back end, like, oh, <laughs> this phone inventory's, uh, you know, ID is this and it's not mapping over here because we don't have it set as that phone inventory's like primary key or whatever, I assume. So like really boring, really terrible. I feel for the guys. So some of the stuff didn't come over. And honestly, I don't know if the things that didn't come over, I'm going to be able to find anyways. Um, but one of the things we've run into is like invoicing, like people are like, Hey, um, back in September of 2018, I think I paid you $90 instead of $80. Can you confirm that? Um, and I don't know who these people are that think that they want to check that, but, uh, those are some of the calls we get. And so for the past couple of months, we've been like, um, we don't know. <laughs> Sorry about you. Oh. It was before, uh, October. Uh, we don't have that data, so I hope it's not important for you to know. So, uh, and I don't think it'll come up, uh, but that's kind of why I wanted to get in is in case we have that situation where I need to be able to look at something in our old database, uh, I'm hoping that it will be in this SQL file that I got as a backup from the people who brought us over to the new system that we use. You so should. no, nothing exciting, no treasure. <laughs> I mean, previous data is, is kind of treasure at this point. I, this week was working on some RFP stuff and was being asked to go look three years back for data that it just, I don't have a way to get to it anymore. And it'd be pretty nice. Like I would actually be pretty excited if I could pull some of that data, mm -hmm. not as much for the RFP because I don't know, I, I can just go with recent data and spin it, but I would love to be able to do comparisons across our various telephony vendors and be able to definitively say, okay, at this point in time, like this data change, this is what was happening in our world of our company and kind of map out like behavior metric change sort of stuff to previous data. So I don't know that that's going to come up in this certain case, but don't downplay data. It's kind of a treasure. Data is important. It is. <laughs> I just, you know, we'll see if I ever need it. But if I do, I'm one step closer to being ready to make it happen. So before I launch into my little sermon about Udemy, I guess, what did y'all think it was like learning? Like take out the coding side because uh, I did have a complaint that we might have gotten too technical last time, which uh, I would not have expected, but listen to the people, I guess. So what was it like learning something new for you guys? What do you regret? What are you really excited about? Brett, especially, I know you kind of jumped in on this. Yeah. What would y'all have changed or what would you do again? Uh, what would you recommend? I think um, after barely doing any coding in the past and it's been so long since I did it, I think going into this, I, I just felt like there's a huge hurdle as far as even just to be able to get to a point where I could on my own pull up my laptop, type in print hello world, and even get to that point to just run a part. Like I, it just been so long and it was cool. Just how quickly and specifically with Python and some of the tools that again, my experience is very little, that was easy. And it was just kind of off to the races at the very beginning, just being able to type in code and see that code print out text or do simple math equations. Um, so that was cool. Um, and then I kind of jumped ahead rather than doing like y'all did kind of a class or a curriculum, uh, just cause I, <laughs> I was struggling to learn and um, be able to produce something practical. I needed a project. Um, so that's where I was like, I, I, I looked up a couple, you know, easy things to automate with Python, Googled for a bit, wrote down a few things that could help me with work or just day to day and just picked one as far as converting files. And that, that kind of helped me, um, just quickly learn how to um, use and kind of modify code. So I, I'm reading through advanced code that I, I could not create on my own, but could at least follow and modify for my own purposes and then take advantage of you know, Python's um, libraries and modules. And um, it's cool. Even on like the, the free software I'm using, I could invite you guys to come 
work in my programs. Like it, it's cloud-based, so we could free software, um, write out code together and edit, review it. And man, it be, there's less hurdles than I thought to being able to learn Python or even C4 or, or some of these other coding languages. So I, I'm pretty, it was a, it was a cool challenge, even though it was a, it was a crazy week. I wish it had been, or a month, I wish it had been a different, different month that I took it on with you guys, but still learned a lot. Yeah. I mean, it, those things definitely happened and at least you, you did more than you would have otherwise, like you said, right? So there, there's value to it. And I actually, similar to Andrew, got, got a complaint that things were a little bit more technical in the last episode and, and the people want to hear more about Brett and Brett's life. Me? Yeah. It's yeah. Pretty, my life's pretty technical. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> so, who are the stats? That's, that's fair. So sorry to disappoint anybody who wanted us to move away from technical. Brett's, Brett is a robot, apparently. Um, no, <laughs> oh my, that explains so much. <laughs> <laughs> so the project that you ended up doing within Python, talk us through why image converting is something that's important to you at work. And then just, you know, you've mentioned a few times that work has been kind of crazy. So like what's, what's been going on that has been a little bit crazy. What have been some of like your, your day to days? Cause I don't think we've had a project manager on before. I know there's a lot of people that are interested in hearing more about that. Yeah. Well, day to day. So project management, I, I'm planning projects. I'm, I'm managing the, the scope time, like budget and plan, plan, plan. And then we execute on a project and something doesn't work. And then the, you react, you problem solve, and then you learn from it and move on to the next project. And, and I'm working, managing a lot of usually smaller projects at once. Um, so even going back to the program that, um, I created a lot of times I am pulling information, um, and sending it out to my install teams that are actually installing equipment, executing on projects. And so this will help me do that better, do it quicker. Um, cause a lot of times once we're actually installing our equipment in operating rooms, I'm like the, the tech guy in a van, like just saying, okay, we're missing parts. I'm ordering it right now. Or you have an issue with this equipment. Like, let me talk to this engineer. He's sending me photos. He's telling me pull documents from here. Uh, I'm sending them resources while kind of planning for the next few projects. Um, so this program, it, it will, once I automate it, it will help me with that. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's at least my experience as a project manager is plan a whole bunch and then something doesn't go right, right. And react and figure it out. And that's kind of the fun part though, is when things don't feel right is how do we make it work? So I'm curious that for those of y'all that have seen Spider-Man, this, this will kind of resonate. Like you are the guy in the chair, like what, yeah. what Nate wants to be the guy in the chair. He's telling people what, what to do to directing. Like, yeah, that's you. Yeah. Yeah. And actually I could totally use some of that technology as far as, you know, what Spider-Man's got his suit. I could use that. Our install team could use that. <laughs> that would be huge. That'll be my next project. Just, just decided <laughs> we're going to get our, our install teams, uh, tech suit. So I can just, I'll be in <laughs> their eyes and ears. They'll be my eyes and ears and I'll be. You've seen the movie. Yeah, yeah, anyway. yeah. I'm you tracking Andrew. You, you get what I'm saying? Oh, they, yes, I am this. just hoping to see Spider-Man in the room, uh, or at least your text dressed as Spider-Man when they're installing stuff. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure Marvel and Disney would be cool with that if we just copy it exactly the look and the function. Yeah, they're in hospitals, so I mean, <laughs> I feel like that bring joy. Dude, like children's hospitals, yeah. all over it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It, okay, one other thing I do want to ask you when we were when we were working out earlier this week, uh, you you had to take a call. There's something going on with a with a with a room, and I heard you say something along the lines of, you know, "I don't normally think this, but I'm starting to wonder if if this was like built over an ancient Indian burial ground or something like that." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was going on there? <laughs> we uh, <laughs> we just wrapped up a 15 OR. Uh, building expansion. So uh, the, the, this hospital, well, established big hospital, um, they're basically doubling, um, their operating room capacity. And so we wrapped up a huge project. I mean, they've been building for three years. Uh, it was a whole lot of planning for us, but about a two month install, we we're doing all the booms, lights, and then some of the endoscopy equipment. And, uh, we had one room 
where it was just our problem child at the tail end. They're actually going live Monday in these operating rooms. It was uh, fourth quarter, seconds left on the clock. Friday afternoon, we're still banging our heads against the, or maybe it was Thursday. We we're still having issues with uh, one specific room. So I'm not usually this way. You know, I'm, I'm pretty practical, logical. You know, what's the next thing we need to check on the list? What's our, we play something, what can we test? Um, swap things from other rooms. How do we you know, troubleshoot, figure this out? I started to think that it was cursed, that the room was cursed. I was about to call the hospital. Don't, don't send patients in there. We should probably build a new building. I was almost to that point, but luckily we, <laughs> we, uh, we figured out the issue, rewired some things. Um, and we're good. We're good. There's probably no curse. I won't mention the hospital, but it's going to do great next week. There's going to be <laughs> lots of successful surgeries. Yeah. The, the curse was probably not, not real. Probably not real. Like if I. If I had tomorrow, you know, popped my Achilles, would you be okay with me as a friend going to the hospital or? <laughs> the hospital, yeah. Uh, I do feel kind of weird, like telling people uh, to be the first patient in a brand new operating room, mm. I feel like. Um, but hey, <laughs> our equipment works. It is, it. <laughs> our equipment has been tested, validated, QIP'd. Our equipment's good. So it's the, it's the other vendors that maybe, maybe wait till Tuesday. And don't pop your kids. Please. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love, I'd love to not do that. It's a career ender. It's a career ender. <laughs> Tell that to, don't even, to KD. That just sounds painful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So yeah. Uh, Man. Uh, Andrew, have you ever seen an Achilles tear? Sorry, now I'm just picturing it. Uh, I don't think I've seen one, but that is... I've seen a video, I think, of somebody stepping weird in that the tendon. You could see it inside their ankle move. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, that's always been one of my bigger fears. It was knee injury, um, which, you know, knocked that one off the list. Yeah. And then uh, blown in Achilles was the other one. Oh, and compartment syndrome. I really don't want compartment syndrome. Those are my three big things. Uh, <laughs> you want a uh, quick peek behind the curtain as far as when it comes to operating rooms, and especially where they're doing lots of orthopedic surgeries? So I don't spend any time in active ORs, but I'm there kind of working next to them sometimes or working in hospitals all the time. Uh, a lot of times you would think you, uh, if you listen to the sounds in, you would think you're in like a mechanic shop. Um, <laughs> a lot of these orthopedic surgeons, they are blasting rock music and um, just cranking out surgeries. Uh, one patient after the other. So um, that was kind of a shock to me. I just thought hospitals were very, I don't know, ultra professional, very quiet, clean plate. And sometimes that's that's not always how it is. So as a as Stryker, as, as we are integrators, we always need to make sure that our uh, audio system is working or else uh, everything else could be working in the room. Like the, the <laughs> functional equipment, you know, medical get, you know, all the signals that they need, um, all the power, all that. But if, if uh, a surgeon can't blast his uh, 1980s heavy metal, um, then it's, it's not going to fly. We're going to get some angry phone calls. That's good to know. Yeah. And I, I, like to, I like to think that's how it goes. I'm glad they're having a good time. Yeah. We need to follow up with Jason, ask him what his surgery playlist yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> He's a young doctor, though. He probably also doesn't have to use YouTube to play music. It's probably like, eh, I just... Spotify. Spotify. <laughs> Connect with Bluetooth. The, the Striper rep showed me how to do this, guys. Okay, I want to jump back to SQL real quick or uh, coding, I guess, depending on how it looks. And so this is probably partly me not having a child. <laughs> I have more free time than both of you do, possibly combined. I don't know. I think, I think. But also... I wanted to talk about Udemy because I like sincerely enjoyed the course and SQL is pretty dry. Like it is not, uh, it's dry and the applications you use it are very dry. Honestly, you're doing business like related activities. It's Excel on steroids, but I paid uh, $14 for a course. Um, so it came out to cost me about, uh, 50 cents a day, uh, to, learn SQL for a month. And I don't know if it was just the time thing, but I mean, there was only a couple days that I missed um, hopping in and taking and working on the course. 
It was just, it was so well planned out. It was these little bite-sized chunks. I don't know. I feel like that had a impact on my ability to continually show up to practices instead of just doing like what you guys were doing, where it was self-learned, self-taught. Um, having that 50 cents a day course, um, I think gave me that extra edge on being able to show up and not have to worry about what am I going to do next? What am I going to learn next? And then also there was, you know, it wasn't much money, but I had like a minor financial incentive <laughs> to keep doing it because I paid for the course. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I truly enjoyed it. It's, I think I bought like a dozen sequel, not sequel, a dozen uh, Udemy courses after this one because I was like, that was a blast. <laughs> I, I truly enjoyed it. It really covered a lot of bases. Did it give you like assignments as well as you were going? Yeah. And so I was thinking, I think the course itself was technically only like six hours long, maybe seven or eight hours long. But I split up when I was doing it. Basically, I would do the thing like a, I'd watch the videos and kind of follow along on my keyboard. So I was pausing a lot and I'd go do my own thing in the the editor and I'd come back, start the video again. And I'd follow along during that. And then whenever the challenges and the assignments came up, um, they would take me, they'd, they'd usually be close to a 30 minute thing. So I'd have these little challenges that were basically the next days, like I'd pause the next day, I'd come back and I'd start the challenge. I'd do the challenge. And that was my, my 30 minutes that day was relearning it and working on it. So it, it felt like it stuck pretty well. So just a, just a thought I'd put out there was, you know, there's a lot of free resources out there, but finding that course, especially something that cheap, I, I think was really beneficial to me compared to if I would have tried to do it just on a, a web application at, at self-taught level. I also don't have a kid again, so that helps. <laughs> so, but all right, uh, let's hop into the quick rundown of what the latest challenge is going to be. And I don't believe Brett is going to be technically doing it with us, but hopefully he will still be following along and helping Daniel at least in uh, working with yeah, him. I'll, so, I'll be the coach. I'll be the coach. <laughs> Good. I hope you have a whip, like a nice long Indiana Jones whip. Whip. You go get a whip and a whistle. Whip and a whistle. Coach Brett, whip and a whistle. <laughs> You're going to come home and Angela's going to be like, what is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> also, actually a sidebar on this, uh, nothing to do with Angela, but uh, your project management. I had a friend of mine reach out and uh, say he was working with you. So I thought that was pretty cool. I know I'd already texted yeah. you about it, but yeah. wanted to give Derek his own shout out. Yeah. Not my cousin. The one I was trying to get me to pirate uh, software with, um, but Derek Gardner, he's an old college friend, and I just thought that was wild that one, he's willing to listen to a podcast of a guy he hasn't seen in like 10 years, and two, that you work together. That's just cool. Yeah, we were literally like, when you text me, uh, like 30 minutes before, we were on a call together, I had no idea, so we caught up after. That was awesome. That's so cool. Man, I love that so much. Okay. It is almost summertime. Spring is here. So we are going to be doing a physical challenge. Uh, it is going to be vertical jumping improvement. Uh, something that Daniel already has me beat by miles and spades and whatever idiom you want to use. That means Daniel is kicking my butt at his ability to jump higher than me. But uh, that just means that I'm going to have that much more improvement than him because he's already peeking out. I've got a lot of space to work with. <laughs> so... Daniel, what do you think this challenge is going to do with you? What are your techniques you're going to follow through on uh, besides Brett whipping you uh, bloody? What's your plan? Yeah, so I I do have a little bit of concern that I'm at a bit of a plateau. So it is what it is. I, at, at this point, like I'd be thrilled if I could add two or three inches to my vertical. That That would be... Pretty awesome. So aside from... That'd bring you into full dunking height, wouldn't it? Like legitimate dunking, not just like tipping the ball in, right? Or am I misunderestimating your towers already? Uh, yeah, I probably would with, with the basketball because I could... The biggest thing on dunking that's really hard, honestly, is being able to palm the ball. So I can dunk a volleyball because I can palm it pretty easily, like within my gather, like I don't lose the ball. Um, it is a little bit of a smaller ball as well. The basketball, the problem is like, I can't calm it. So I lose some of the opportunity to gather and like explode up with both arms. The ball is a little bit bigger. So that's part of the job. So if we add three inches to your vertical, do you think you can like alley-oop dunk or two-hand dunk if you get three inches? 
Maybe, maybe like th- three inches might like, okay. In my opinion. Yes. So yeah. So that's, that's what I would love to do is get three inches, be able to dunk. That would be awesome. I think what I'm going to go for is I'm already lifting pretty consistently with Brett. So I just need to be more consistent on that deadlift squats, you know, lower leg explosiveness kind of thing. So that will stay in the mix continue to do track workouts, like all that kind of stuff. That That's probably more maintenance than much of anything else. But I'm going to use a little bit of a throwback. It's something that I've done in the past to help with my vertical. It's a program called Air Alert. You basically just for several weeks do progressively more jumps <laughs> over the course of time. And it's kind of split in between uh, jumping and, and resting and things like that. So yeah, I'm just going to kind of go with the the route of doing the thing that I want to do more often and hoping that I get a little bit better at it. As far as tracking, you know, I'm going to try to keep track of protein in- intake. I think that's something that you've got on your list. I think that's a good one. Um, I'm actually going to try to keep track of my weight. Um, and ideally, I actually probably want to see it go up just a little bit because I think I'm going to need to add some muscle, but I'm going to keep track of uh, that and then consistency in the working out. Um, and the last thing I think is a little bit different than maybe what you were doing, or maybe I can convince you to join me in this, but with the vertical measurement, um, I'm not just doing a standing still leap because that's not what you do in most sports. Like if I was going to dunk a basketball, I'm not just going to stand still and dunk it. If I'm going out, I'm playing ultimate, I'm trying to hype point. Like I'm not just standing still volleyball. I'm trying to spike. I'm not just standing still. So I'm going to. I'm going to measure with a gather with a run up and part of why I would maybe argue for you to also do that. Cause I know if you do the standstill, it is a little bit more static and you can maybe see like the raw power increase that lets you jump higher. But if you're doing that run up, you also have the opportunity to better train your jumping technique and, and, and the skill that goes into getting, you know, a launch there. There's not as much you can do on a standing vertical. It's basically just having more muscles and jumping higher. So yeah, what are you doing, Andrew? So let me see where to start. <laughs> we obviously talked about the, you know, we're going to be testing vertical. So I'm going to try and test close to every day. Cool. I don't know because I haven't tested yet. So I don't know how much of a pain in the butt that's going to be. But uh, that is currently my plan. Protein intake, I think, is going to be important because that is something I've been lacking on. And since the goal here is going to be both a mind-muscle connection, but also building that muscle up to be able to jump. And I say muscle, the jump muscle, you know, that one that's uh, there. So obviously building up a better posterior chain. Yeah, the pinky toe one. (laughs) So that whole chain of lower body plus some upper body, I've I've heard helps. So I'm going to really try and focus on my protein uptake and intake, excuse me, my protein intake. And a lot of the health benefits, and that's why I was a little hard. It was hard for me to start on that was everything came into my mind at once. So I'm taking a really holistic approach on the back end. Um, I'm going to try 30 days, no alcohol. Uh, I'm going to be also changing up my diet, which this could actually be really detrimental, but I'm going to try and go carnivore keto diet. Sorry, Shalom, I know that's going to be fun. (laughs) So I'm going to be doing that and... Hopefully that helps uh, make me more aerodynamic, I guess you could say, and really let the body build that muscle better without any distraction. For the actual building part of the program, I'm a huge fan of the knees over toes guy, uh, which is funny since I've really not done anything of his and I only found out about him a couple months ago. But that's his big claim to fame was he basically went from uh, bad injured knees to being able to dunk basketball like in his 30s. And uh, hey, that sounds familiar. So big fan of him. One of the things that he talks about is really building up your hamstrings and doing a lot of like asymmetrical work, including sled push and pull. So those are going to be kind of my two big things. I'm going to be doing a lot of sled push pull stuff and jumping a lot, uh, preferably off one or both legs, depending on the day. And that'll be kind of my main attempt there. So uh, beyond that, I really just business as usual hopefully everything else will uh be able to work out i'll try and keep track of the reps and the pounds 
uh, in the gym that I'm hitting and what exercise I was exercises I was doing that day, or at least the main one for jumping, I guess. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. I'll just try and be consistent. We'll see if just tracking it and working towards that specific goal changes anything. Uh, so Brett, if you've got any, you know, two to 25 cents, all the way up to a dollar even of cents that you want to throw in on this, you know, you're the strongest of the three of us. So you must know the most. I don't know if I'm the strongest right now. I'm trying to catch up, but no, I, I'm, I'm excited for y'all. I think it's going to be a good challenge. Um, one thing I would recommend is if you're going to do, whenever you do your vertical test, whether it's once a week, twice a week, daily, I'd be curious to do a few tests like before you warm up and then do a few tests after you do a little bit of warm up, and then do a test, you know, after you stretch or something just to see if that makes a difference. And then even, um, you know, as y'all are working on getting you know, stronger, you're cleaning up your diet, test some of the techniques as far as, you know, using your arm swings, changing up some of your steps. Um, cause I bet that's where you get the most bang for your buck on the vertical test. But no, that's, uh, I'm pumped. I hope y'all are both dunking by the end of the month. Oh, we're going to definitely both be dunking. There's, yeah, there's no, no doubt about it. Even if it's Andrew, like standing on my shoulders, we'll find a way to dunk. We'll get there. And <laughs> Vince Carter and Clyde Drexler by the end of the month. That's what I'm expecting. That's right. I mean, there's a lot of things that would have to happen to get us there. Uh, it's fine. One, one step at a time and dumb getting step one. Okay. Well, before we close out the episode, we're, we're keeping story time. It, it's a staple of our guest episodes, but since you are here on back to back episodes, we get to flip the script a little bit and I'm going to actually tell a story about you. Andrew doesn't, doesn't get to tell a story. He doesn't know you well enough yet. He hasn't earned, earned that right. <laughs> Maybe someday. All right. So in our last episode, you came in and shared a couple of the nicest stories that have ever been told publicly about Andrew and I. So first of all, thank you. <laughs> thank you for doing that. You're a true friend. And the story that I want to tell, I think just highlight again and how generous you are and how thoughtful you are. And so for anybody that doesn't know Brett, Brett is an epic party planner, like an epic event planner. It, and maybe that's not actually true. Maybe he just like epically loves Angela. I know that that is true. That is true. Um, so since being friends with Brett, I've seen so many just really awesome events and parties and things like that that have been planned around Christmas, New Year's. Um, I, th I think that there was a Christmas party where you created like several different things from Jimmy Fallon's like uh, late night like events that we got to do. Mad Lib skits. Mad Lib skits. Christmas theme for Christmas movies. You, you also did like, he does this thing where you reach inside of a box and oh, like can you you can't see you guys the air. Yeah, you get the yeah. Yeah. So you like, you got you created a box where we did that. So yeah. do things like that. Um, pretty recently you rented out an entire coffee shop to do a no. birthday party you know, for Angela. I could move like tables. Uh, yeah, coffee, karaoke. That was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. So epic events. And the story I'm going to tell was an, an opportunity where we got to do one together, which was like a dream come true because I know how much you love doing events and planning events. I also really love to just do elaborate over the top types of things. And so, uh, this past December, um, we had the chance to go out to Cedar Ridge reserve or something like that. It's a, it's a lake near Dallas and there's this really, really awesome house. We'd actually been to once before where you planned an epic Lord of the Rings weekend for friends and cooked like pretty much single-handedly, um, an entire feast. So as we were there, we were like, we got to come back to this place. It's so awesome. Um, and if we need to do it kind of in the winter time, we talked about doing a Harry Potter theme. And so we were able to make that happen. And, um, we decided we were going to create like this wizarding house kings across the course of the whole weekend. And it was just so much fun to take a Google sheet and throw all of these random ideas out there. Um, I started by just like, yeah, lots of random ideas. And then you came in and we together were able to kind of put together all of these different 
that it's sort of ranging from uh, like rock, paper, scissors, but with spells and you did spell casting. Yeah. Um, we have four cruxes hidden throughout the entire house. As teams had to find and destroy her or cruxes throughout the course of the weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, we still had Harry Potter themed food, floating candles, like all that fun stuff. The best part was we ended up making this sort of like a, a progressive escape room, I guess. And at the end, it was like a legit escape room where um, you had to, you know, go up the staircase with all these booby traps to get based on the flood least the first book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the sorcerer was still alone. Yeah. All of the different challenges that they had yeah. to to clear in order to make it to the sorcerer's stone. So yeah, I had to get fluffy going up the stairs. Um, you put together this awesome, like key, uh, how would you describe that? Yeah. So the, yeah, yeah. In the, in the book, in the movie, they had to find the key to get through, um, whatever it was to the next challenge. So the weed keys, yes. so we had a drawer full of random antique looking keys and they had to match up the right ones to get through the door. That was, yeah. And you had to write a broomstick to, you had to write a broom. Yeah. 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 You had to, yeah. Write a broomstick. We had some, uh, some wizard's chest, uh, where you do <laughs> that one. That was cool. You, you had to, you had to solve the, you had one move where you could, um, take the key and you had to solve it as quick as you can. All of this is timed, by the way, um, uh, a potions challenge riddle. Um, uh, we, we did a toilet paper wrapping for the devil's snare and then like a true legitimate escape room that was seriously like all of you would be put together in escape room that was better than some professional escape rooms I have, I have been to. Um, so really I, that is my story of just that epic party planning <laughs> and the extravagant <laughs> efforts that you go to in order to, uh, yeah, just create awesome experiences for your friends, for your family. And it's something that I, I think is very unique about you and I very much appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Eden and Riley, our daughters, they are going to have epic birthday <laughs> parties. Get ready. I, I, I think everybody had a fun time at the Harry Potter weekend. We had a plan. We had the most. <laughs> There's no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Planning the uh, the events and challenges and then putting everybody through. through them. So I appreciate that. That's and also part of the reason I, plan, I try to plan epic birthday parties for Angela is because she is the best at surprising me with parties. <laughs> and so I, I, I try to try to hang with her. But no, appreciate you sharing that story. Runs, runs in the blood. Yeah. <laughs> it's our thing, I guess. All right. Well, thank you for joining us for two episodes, Brett. It's unprecedented. You're our first repeat guest. Yeah. <laughs> and still biggest fan. Throwing it out there. I know, uh, there's been a couple people who have told me that they, uh, they feel like they're the biggest fan since our last episode, but I'm on the podcast twice. I'm the biggest fan. I'm there. It's recorded. It's permanent. Forever archived, <laughs> documented. Yeah, you can say scoreboard at this point. Scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> scoreboard. Well, we appreciate having you on. And uh, feel free to, you know, observe or join the vertical challenge as much as you would like. And to all of our other listeners, we we hope that you enjoy following along with uh, the challenges, whether you're just kind of listening in or um, whether it's inspired you to do something similar. Um, we love to hear about those experiences we'll shout you out on the podcast um if you want to be like brett and be on the episode a couple times and um, get to go through one of these challenges with us we would love that as well so look forward to hearing from us in a couple weeks on how the vertical leap is going um how close andrew and i are to becoming bits carter and clyde drexler and we look forward to connecting with you until then thank you